Hey, hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Richie Thomas, the Soldier's Coach, coming to you with your Saturday sessions of the Soldier's Coach. This is my weekly platform where I help our brave men and women in the United States military mentally transition from a soldier's mindset to a business professional's mindset because I feel like there were five big, massive enemies that we are not trained for, we are not prepared for, and ultimately we are losing in the battle in the areas of unemployment, mental health, which often leads to suicide, homelessness, lack of education, and physical injury. Those are the five big opponents, the enemies, if you will, for my folks after they transition out of the military. You know, the military does a phenomenal, phenomenal job of building kind of that built-in uh, mentorship, coaching, and community to kind of have your back at all times. But we lose a lot of that as we transition out, right? So what is the plan? What is the system to replace the military structure after you decide to transition out of the uniform? Because remember, you can't wear the uniform forever. So it's crazy, man. America, we can't seem to catch a break. Um, 2022 is like the extension of 2020. We're pushing almost, what, three years now of this damn pandemic. Already at the top of 22, we lost three legends three icons in American culture and just kind of a global footprint. We lost the, the late, great Betty White, uh, probably one of the greatest female comedians of all time. She has unbelievable presence and just kind of composure and just the quality of her work and what she's done, um, not just in entertainment, but just kind of how it's just this massive, anytime you see Betty White, people smile. And it's just really, really hard to put a price tag on that. And of course, we also lost our uncle of American football, John Madden, the godfather, the voice of American football. Man, I was so devastated. I damn near had to take a bereavement day. Uh, I was so hurt by that. This man taught me and coached everything I learned from football. I learned from John Madden. So I was, I was, I was hurt by John Madden. That that was personal, right? So we lost John Madden. Then of course, this week we lost the great Bob Saget, probably one of America's favorite comedians, uh, the kind of the open secret him when he was a dirty comedian and no one knew because he was the face of American sitcoms like Phil House. And you know, if you're over 35 like myself, we remember as the host of America's, you know, America's Funniest Home Videos, which is essentially YouTube before YouTube. Nonsense. Um, but when Bob Saget died, we all kind of gasped. And when I kind of sit back and I reflect on why Betty White and John Madden and Bob Saget, like why is it we were so hurt as a culture, as a, as a country? And I was really thinking, that, you know what it was about? It was legacy. Betty White made people laugh. You know, on all of her shows or movies, like she was a great host on Tonight Shows and things like that. But John Madden made people, you know, he just had this grandfather kind of appeal to him. His legacy was just kindness and, you know, edu you know, sports education. But he educated, he was a teacher in football. But John, even Bob Saget, like his legacy was like, you know, it was comedy and, you know, sitcoms that is. But he made people laugh. Their legacy was just so much bigger than their their ego and their brand. I mean, the brand was, you know, you know, making people feel warm, making people feel good, making people feel loved and smile. So I was like, damn, what's my legacy gonna be? So once I'm thinking about like how this affects all my folks getting ready to transition out of the military, I was like, what's your legacy beyond the uniform? What is your legacy beyond the uniform? Some of y'all been in the military five years, 10 years, 25 years, 35 years. There's a big four-star general getting ready to transition out of the military. I think Commander Garrett from Fort Bragg, if I'm not mistaken, has been in the military for 25, 30 years, four-star. I mean, he's done everything he can do. But what's his legacy going to be after he decides to take the uniform off, right? The Sergeant Major of the Army, same thing. All these guys, after y'all transition out, what is your legacy like? Who do, who are you? What do you stand for? Like, what is your legacy beyond the rank? What's your legacy beyond the battlefield? What's your legacy beyond the combat battlefield? I mean, you get it. You're you're Rambo. You're a rough, tough soldier, kick ass, airborne ranger. Like, I get all of that. What is it essentially that you stand for? Like, I always think, you know, I love the word association game. If I say Coke, what's the first word that comes to your mind? If I say Michael Jordan, what's the first two or three words that come to your mind? If I say Oprah, what's the first two or three words that come to your mind? So when you walk into a room, what do you want 
to come into the minds of the people who see you? What's the first two or three words that you want people of the world to see you and notice you as? What is it that you want to be remembered for? Like, what is your legacy beyond the uniform? And I don't know that we ever spend time to like really reflect on that. I'll give you a great example. Two of the greatest leaders I've ever worked with was a guy named Sergeant C. Cohen, Staff Sergeant C. Cohen, turned out to be Warren Officer Cohen, and now he's since retired. Um, and a guy named Staff Sergeant Madero, Tony Madero, he's phenomenal, phenomenal. The two greatest leaders I've probably ever worked with because uh, they pushed me and pulled me and helped grow me into this guy you see today. But I'm very, very grateful. But their legacy to me is growth and his coaching and his leadership. And I was like, it's been 15 years since I've been with those guys, probably longer, probably close to 20. And their legacy to me is just like, I don't know how you put a price tag on the impact that they had on me. This is my first real teachers, my military, my first real job. And those are my first real managers and they were great. Staff Sergeant Cohen's legacy when we was running down our dens doing four miles and some soldier was getting his ass chewed out by, <laughs> you know, the first sergeant and sergeant major and he was screaming and cussing and boom, 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 boom. And I'll never forget, uh, Sergeant Cohen looked at me and said, if you ever want to get somebody's attention, you just whisper in their ear. You don't yell, you don't scream. You don't make an ass out of them. You don't make an ass out of yourself. You just whisper very closely. And people will listen harder when you whisper. You don't have to yell. And that's one of those things that I always took with me. I'm 39. He told me that when I was 18. And his legacy is like, yo, this is how you communicate with people. So one of those things he taught me, so legacy. Like, I don't think of Staff Sergeant Cohen. I think this was just a great teacher, a great mentor, a great coach that I had in my life I'm very grateful for. Or the other fella, Staff Sergeant Madero, um, who was just a great, he had unbelievable patience. He used to call me the man of a thousand questions because I would ask him everything because I just like to know how it works. I'm an engineer by trade. So I was like, well, how does this work? How does this tinker? How do I get make it better? But he had so much patience with me. He never lost his cool, no attitude. He he led me into Afghanistan. Always calm, composed. He was just a great, great leader. So their legacy to me was never what their rank was. They were just the E6 or just the E7 or E8. I didn't care if they were, to me, their legacy was they were four-star generals because of the impact, that how much they poured into me. So I'm always curious, like even now, like I take a bullet for those guys. Because I'm like, they had so much love and patience for me. It had nothing to do with their rank. On the flip side, I worked with some people who were very high up the totem pole who were straight asses. Like, let's just be honest. You know, we work with people, it's like, I don't know how you collect a paycheck. You were such an ass. <laughs> but their rank and file to the business or, you know, even outside of the military, um, you know, people get paid based off their experience and how they sell themselves at that time in that position. So I'm never really impressed with people who are too high up because their legacy is like, it's not great. It's usually just a bunch of degrees and you know, I've been doing this for 20, 30 years. So I'm kind of living off of who I was versus who you get the experience now and in the moment. And the legacy, it's never really impressive to me. So when I think about what's your legacy um, beyond the uniform, you know, cause I, <laughs> even a great testament to that is at home. Like, your kids don't care about your rank. Your kids don't care about your rank. I once worked with a guy who was a two-star general, if I'm not mistaken, and he had been stationed, you know, 12 different duty stations. And I'll be honest with you, it was abundantly clear to me that his kids hated him. Two-star general, gonna get the flag, all of that when he when he goes. But I was like, you're gonna get the march, the parade at your funeral. But I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't know if your kids are gonna be there when you pass, because your legacy at home, it sucks. So your kids don't care about your rank. They don't care what your rank is. They don't care. It's not impressive. My son doesn't give a damn <laughs> how much money I make or if I'm a CEO or if I'm an intern. He doesn't care if I you know, was in Afghanistan for 10 years. My son just found out I was in the army. It was hilarious, like a year ago. He didn't even know because he's only seven. I've been out of the military for 13 years. 
So he didn't know anything about that. Kids don't care about your rank. My legacy with him is completely different from how I was in the military, right? So what I'm thinking about legacy with my kids or you know, your spouse and family and community is so much bigger than just your uniform. A lot of times our identity gets tied into our occupations or occupation in America typically becomes our identification. So how do we separate who you are from what you do? So a lot of us, we say, I am a soldier. I am a sailor. I am a Marine. That's... That's what you did, it's not who you are. So it's hard for people to transition and leave the military. I think a lot of people um, delay transitioning out of the military because they're so tied up, their identity is so tied up into that uniform. But again, it's like, what is your legacy beyond the uniform? What is your legacy beyond the rank? The kids don't care about your rank. I mean, I would even go as far as saying the spouse really don't care. I mean, as long as you're taking care of home and that's, you know, male or female, it doesn't matter. I mean, of course, people want you to grow and you to be happy with what your career path is. But, you know, as long as you can cover the bills and cover the spread, if you will, and get a great quality of life, but just come home and be a great person. Um, that's so much more important than, than what you're doing at, at business or in the military, outside the military. So what is your legacy beyond the uniform, beyond the rank? And what is your legacy beyond the combat battlefield? I'll be honest with you, like I was getting out of the military and you know trying to share uh, war stories with people on job interviews. And I was like, I was in Afghanistan. I was jumping out of airplanes and they'd be like, oh, that's cool. So what are you gonna do for us? What do you mean? I'm a war. I was in Afghanistan. That's not good enough. Well, that's great. You know, I realize that people only want to hear your combat stories three days out of the year. They only want to hear about your war stories on Independence Day, <laughs> Veterans Day, and Memorial Day. The other 363 days of the year, they ain't thinking about the bottom line, not the battlefield. So they'll buy you a beer on Fourth of July and they'll pat you on the back on Labor Day or you know Veterans Day, but they ain't trying to hear your war stories because it has nothing to do with their business. So it was a hard time mentally transitioning for me from a soldier to CEO. And what I realized is like, yo, everybody in America, whether you understand this or not, we are all CEOs. Most people just don't know it. We are CEOs of our own careers. Like we can take ownership and we can just dominate our career field if we just understood that we are actually in the business of business. And I think sometimes soldiers struggle so much, i.e. unemployment, we are so locked in our identity our, our mindset our heart set our soul set is stuck in combat and we're not trained for commerce right so we're trained for the combat battlefield but we're not trained for the you know the economic battlefield that is capitalism right but i'm thinking about my legacy and it's like part of my legacy is i want to teach soldiers how to how to do business i want to teach soldiers how to become not just soldiers but ceos my legacy is I don't want to necessarily make a million dollars, but I'd love to help a million soldiers make a million dollars. Like that would be a cool ass story, right? I can be, I think there's over geez, 16, 17 million millionaires, if I'm not mistaken. I'm kind of probably fact check that one. I'm not gonna go straight Joe Rogan on you guys. Um, <laughs> but there are millions of millionaires. I mean, through real estate, just your 401k alone, um, you can become a millionaire over 40 years. But I think it would be so much cooler to help a million people grow into who they're designed to become. It's a true coach or, you know, a leader. It's like, you know, I think about my legacy is part of it is wanting to be coach. I just want to be a phenomenal, phenomenal coach to so many people um, to help them grow into who God made them be. I think, just think that's, for me, it's, it's hard to put a price tag on that, right? How do you help people grow into who they're supposed to become? So for me, legacy, my first word is probably coach love and community i just want people to feel the love that they didn't feel i want people to feel supported the way they need to be supported and i want people if you can help somebody like uh, finish or start their dream they'll fight for you to the death but to me that's a hell of a legacy but that's mine they're not necessarily yours so if you're listening to this or watching what is your legacy what is your legacy what is your legacy like betty white like john madden like Bob Saget. Bob Saget to me was so funny because it was like, oh, he played the wholesome dad on Full House and then found out, like you see him on stage, like he was doing stand up. Uh, there was probably should have been on HBO after dark. <laughs> but the legacy was kind of like, that was an open secret. If you knew him, who he really was, that's how he really got down. But the, the roles on Full House or, you know, America's 
America's Funniest Home Videos, he was just playing a role. It was just, that was part of his legacy, but it made us smile. So what is your legacy? What is your legacy? What is your legacy um, beyond the uniform? And now too, now that you're getting ready to transition out of the military, specifically, like, what do you want your legacy to be in business? Like I've been in IT for almost 20 years now. So I was like, at first, you know, I went through three different phases in IT. I was trying to break in and then it was trying to trying to knock out one area. And then I, with the last five to six years, I was like, man, the people who really make money in IT, um, they're not necessarily the engineers or the programmers. It's the ones who understand business. It's the business exec. So like, how do you become a CIO or a CTO? Like, how do I become a chief information officer? How do I get in the C-suite of business and just translate technology? So my legacy in business is like, what do you want your legacy to be? Not just in battle, but in business and in your career. So my legacy, I was really trying to focus on being a, a C-suite technology um, business partner. I want to be a CIO. It was very important to me because I wanted to have put my fingerprints on a business and say, hey, I made decisions at that level. So my legacy was trying to be high impact, you know, high impact, high volume, move the needle on a very, very big way um, for businesses because I wanted them to trust my 20 years of experience. So you can't necessarily leave your fingerprints on everything, but I've realized you can leave your heart print on everyone. Um, yeah can't leave the fingerprints on everything, but I know I can leave my heart print on everyone. So when I think about even in business, I was like, man, if I could coach people on my team, coach people on my in my company, or you know, coach veterans to help grow them into who they become, like even as a business professional, my legacy is very intentional. It's, it's I'm thinking about community and helping people grow into who they're supposed to become. But what is your legacy specifically in your career? What do you want your who do you want to become? You know, who's your hero, your mentor, your coach in business, not just outside of, of military or outside of you know community, but in business, you know, who are your coaches, who are your who's your community, who's your mentors um, that you look up to and kind of copy or mold uh, their career growth, their career path. Like who are you coaching? Who are you trying to intentionally become in the business side? very separate from the personal or even very separate from military, right? So there's different leaders in different lanes. So who are you kind of mimicking from that aspect that you could kind of clone your legacy to become? Because there's, I feel like, <laughs> I was reading something recently that said that the average NFL team has 19 coaches, 19 coaches. You got 11 positions on each side of the ball and basically a coach for every position. I was like, I have 19, I have about, I have 16 coaches in my life. It's crazy. 16. I got a marriage coach. I got a physical coach. I have, I have coaches everywhere. It's crazy. But it's like I'm trying to become a better person in all lanes. So I need a coach in every lane. I need a finance coach. I need a you know relationship coach. I need a parent coach. I need you know get the weight off coach. You know physical trainer and all of that stuff. I need a coach for everywhere. But I need uh, I need somebody I can kind of look and lean on their legacy so I can make me. Uh, better in mind as well right but in, even in business the question what do you want your your legacy in business i want y'all to be very intentional about that and then here that's probably my last question what do you want your legacy like to be in life overall outside of the uniform outside of the rank outside of the boots outside of just military i get it i can talk to a marine who's in the marines for three years 30 years ago and they still talk walk see themselves sell themselves and brand themselves and once a marine always a marine that's great marketing <laughs> but you are no longer in the marine corps i'm a sailor you were a sailor your contract's over you know the contract is null and void you're done services have been rendered you have been paid you're no longer a sailor what is your life legacy now that you've decided to transition out of the military in any in any rank in any field right so what is your life legacy what are you intentionally um trying to make it what do you want to be known and remembered as um now that you've decided to transition out like even if you've been out five years 20 years or 25 years like i've been out longer than i was in now right so i've been out for like say 12 13 years um and i look back and i'm like military was just a very small chapter of my life but it was so impactful because of the leaders that i met the situations that i was put in you know the um, army sent an 18 year old boy into a man's war and it changed me 
drastically because uh, it just put life in a different perspective for me. I realized we can literally go at any minute and now we're in COVID and people are going by, we're losing thousands in a day and a week. COVID's not fake, by the way. I just feel like I need to say that. <laughs> but I'm just thinking about, constantly thinking about legacy, legacy, legacy. Um, as I close, I was thinking about, I went to a funeral a few years back. A um, member of my family, probably very uncon unconventional career path, let's just say. And uh, I remember that the funeral was packed, like standing room only packed. You would have thought the mayor died, the governor died. It was packed. But it made me laugh because, again, career choices were a little bit more unconventional. Let's just leave it at that. But it was so loved by the community. People came out the woodwork to support and pay their last respects. He was so loved, he was so liked, he was so respected in the community that people kind of wanted to come out and just give a final salute, right? And then I remember having a dream about someone, actually, I think it was, I saw this on TV. There was a funeral, another funeral, and no one showed up. No one. It was just like the pastor, and I think it was like one or two people there. But it was a funeral with empty seats. And I was like, man, you don't know who that person was because there was no family, no friends to identify the guy. Guy or gal. And it didn't matter if the net worth was a million dollars or $10 million or whether if they only had 100000 or At the end, it was like, you can have a funeral with standing room only or you can have a funeral with empty chairs. But how you make people feel, how you make people feel loved and respected, you teach the world how to treat you. And I think legacy is a big, big part of that. Your brand, your reputation with the world, with your community, with, with any person you've ever met, you know, you, they will always know or remember the way you made them feel. And a lot of times, most of the times, it has absolutely nothing to do with your rank, right? So I want y'all to think about what is your legacy beyond the uniform? What do you want to be known for? Who do you want to be known as, remembered as? I just want people to know like how much I tried to help them grow and support and be loved. Like that's what, my legacy. But what is yours? What is your legacy beyond the uniform, beyond the rank? All right? This is Richie Thomas, the Soldiers Coach, and I would tell you peace out, but the reality is most of y'all need peace in. Thank you.